Welcome back to season three of the Cowboys and Coffee podcast. D, we made it through two seasons alive, if we haven't pulled our hair out. But uh, mm-hmm. we did it. We're, we're here. Welcome yeah. back. Good to be back. Yeah, that's it. Listen, it's been a busy off season. We got over the morning process of the season. Congratulations to the Chiefs, and thank you to the Chiefs for beating the Eagles in the Super Bowl. We're on to the off season, baby. We're yeah. we're halfway <laughs> to next season, I think, already. Uh, the start dates are uh, the seventeenth, April seventeenth. The Cowboys uh, get back into camp. So let's just start from the top. You know who's gone. Who's new? Who's back? Start with our losses. We've got Connor McGovern, our left guard, signed a a deal with the Bills. Uh, Zach Gifford is gone. They thought he would get some linebacker snaps. He's gone. Noah Brown's with the Texans. Good for him. He's a quality player. Um, Bye-bye. Yeah, McQuaid, their long snapper, is gone. Doesn't bother me too much. I think Bones is going to take care of that. But he was good. He was a pro bowler, wasn't he? Yeah, I don't think he was bad. Yeah, I think it was a pro bowler, wasn't he? Yeah. Dalton Schultz, Sia, and Zeke is gone. Now, tell me the ones that hurt. Tell me the ones that don't hurt. You know, what one hurt the most? Listen, I, I, I know you think it's silly, but it's the long snapper, is, you can replace guys like that. But he is a pro bowler. Um, but, listen, emotionally, is Zeke, obviously. Schultz, you knew he could be going to go, and we had two people there. But Zeke... Zeke is the one that we know. I mean, we've talked to him. We we know what he's all about. We've seen his life turn around from where he started from and where he's at today, you know, and he has to move on. And, you know, when you, us guys who get emotionally attached to these guys and touch bases with him somewhat, um, you know, it's, you know somebody, he's your friend. We, 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 we go out together, but, you know. But we, don't, we wish that. There's those guys in Cowboys lore that you wish had won a Super Bowl, be it Danny White or Tony Romo. You know, Ware got his somewhere else, but Jason Witten. I think Zeke's in that category of guys. Oh, Danny White did win one, by the way. He, he's a, he's on the punter on the 78 team. That's right. He's the punter. <laughs> 77 team, yeah. Go ahead. But still, you know, there's, there's yeah. a, some guys who didn't get theirs, and I think, you know, Zeke's on that list. That yeah. one, like, you're right. Emotionally, that one hurts most for me. Uh, from the production perspective, you know, you'll miss a short yardage back, which you need to address one way or the other. And you, what I think they're going to miss most is his pass blocking. You say, okay, he's not going to go out on routes, but, you know, Pollard has shown, and these, some of these other backs have shown, they just, they're just not up to snuff when it comes to pass blocking like Zeke was. So they'll have to fill that role. Someone's going to have to step up. And what you don't want is Dak getting blindsided because they're running backs – didn't pick up. And that's where Zeke, I think, was excellent. And you say, okay, that's no big deal. It's a running back. It's no big deal until your quarterback gets the snot beat out of him and the broken you know, jaw. Uh, well, it happened to Tony Romo with um, Gronkowski didn't because they got rid of Deion Anderson. Correct. Remember that? Mm-hmm. So it did Dalton, happen. Dalton Schultz I'm not upset with because I think you have guys who are going to replace him on the team, guys who can replace him with the draft. That was business. Yeah, you know, business. good luck. He didn't get some mega deal out there like, oh, he should go. He went somewhere else. He bet on himself. The market was depressed at the tight end position because there's so much talent there. And like I've said before, he made two suck plays at the end of that 49ers game that cost the Cowboys any reasonable shot. He didn't get his feet down and he didn't fight for four possession on both of those plays in the last series of the season. And see you later because I think the other two guys would have done that. Um, McQuaid, I think, is a decent loss, but I think you have a great special teams coordinator who can find yeah. guys who can do that. McGovern's a decent loss. You know, people were poo pooing on that pick for a little bit. He turned out to be a decent left guard, signed a nice contract with another team. I'll get, I'll take a fifth round comp pick from next year because we've seen we'll get that into that in a minute what those fifth round compensation picks can become. You know, Gifford was a good special teams guy. Yes, he was. Yes, snaps, you know that. We'll have to fill that role. Um, and Noah Brown, a very likable cowboy, not super. He was a great special teams guy. Yeah. Special teamer. He's made himself yeah. a great career in the NFL, got another contract. Listen, he's going to be collecting his pension and making good money because he was with the Cowboys. All the best to you. Good luck. See ya. 
And I think I want to go back to the players they brought back now and some of the talented guys they brought back. Let's start number one, Tony Pollard on the tag. What's your view of him on the tag? And what do you think we should be doing with them going forward with him? You had to tag him. No brainer. Um, what going forward is equal carries equal money. You got to split time with him. He, you got, you got to keep him with the same amount of carries he's got. Give him the, give him some money. That's for sure. He's going to have to deal with his, what the offer is after this year. You'll see what he does. Does he give you the, gives you, does he give you um, 1100 yards, 11 touchdowns, 5.1 per carry makes a pro bowl, another pro bowl. Cause he did make a pro bowl this year. Right. Right. He made a pro bowl. My question so is, do you go, He's not going to get the big money. The Z contract, the Cowboys just aren't uh, handing out again. And, and here's one quick sidebar I want to say. I think the Cowboys have taken a long way to get there. But I think where we're at now is they've, they're they making wise decisions. And we've seen this this offseason. We'll talk a little more in a minute. But they're not just handing out these massive contracts like they did for Brandon Carr. They're not trading all these picks for players like Joey Galloway. And they're not this offseason being – super stingy and not sending anyone but their own players anymore like they've done in previous years. They are bringing back players at appropriate prices. They're extending guys. They're restructuring contracts. And I think Pollard on his one-year deal, the tag, he signed it. They're going to try and work a reasonable contract. Four years, $30 million for him, I don't think is that bad. You know, that's $8.5 million a year. That's reasonable in the market. I, I think – um you know, Miles Sanders got like a three, four year deal with about six to six million plus. I think he's better than Miles Sanders, especially at this point in his career. So I wouldn't mind, you know, this year his, his number goes down. Cowboys are right now are sitting at 13 million in cap space. Once he got another 10 million coming June 1st. So they have the ability to, to make some moves. I think if you're going to sign Pollard, now's the time to do it. If not, you draft a running back here and then next year, you let Pollard walk and draft another running back. Well, so so here, here's let, let me just bring this up because this is this is fun about talking sports, especially with you. I, I'm the agent. I'm sitting down with Zeke, and, and I'm ownership, or we either either or. I'm sitting down with with the agent and saying, "Listen, I'm going to make you got your guy healthier. I'm not going to put I'm not putting 300 carries on his back. Here's the money for 200 carries for the next, you know." Whatever he had last year, and that's why you need an agent. Agent goes, yeah, that's a good idea. Now I don't know if you say that to to a running back. Well, there's a depreciating value for running backs, particularly right. now, than we've more than we've ever seen. And uh, you know who's paying top dollar for a running back on a free agent market? I don't know. Uh, we'll, we're, the Giants are going to find out real quick because Saquon, Saquon got tagged and. He's not happy, so you're either going to pay him top dollar. Or he's going to walk next year. You know, now's their time, but that's their problem, not mine. Pollard, I think I'd like back on a three or four year deal worth upwards, I would say $8 million is probably the max I would pay for that. I don't think that breaks the bank. And I think it's, you know, keeping a very talented weapon under contract. But it, I think the money and convince him about the carries. He's going to have during a game. He broke his ankle, whatever he did, not because of he, he has his legs. Right, right. That's not an effect. Him. Zeke broke lost his legs. legs. Yeah, Zeke, that's correct. Zeke, Zeke didn't have the explosion. Pollard does. That's it. You know, let's go through some of the other guys they brought back. Steals on that uh, um, second round tender. Uh, you know, Jerry came out today and said, oh, he's a backup, he's a swing tackle. It's March 27th. I'm not worried about what Jerry says about that. And he's not the one making the call at the end of the day, believe it or not. You know, Mike McCarthy, I think, is the one who's right. going to make that call with with Brian Schottenheimer. And they'll say, okay, because ideally, Steele's at right tackle, Tyron's at left tackle, Tyler's at left guard, Biotis at center, Zach Martin at right guard, and Flourish. But, you know, I think it's probably just a, a, a right. negotiating yeah. tactic at this point. Yeah. Well, he's improved tremendously to be a, a quality right tackle in the league. Oh, and I would like to say this. 
for all the people who poo-pooed Lyle Collins, and we were not one of them because you can go back and see he just got cut by the Bengals. Yeah. So who knows if he can bend over anymore. All right. Donovan Wilson, LVE come back. Who do you like? What? Why do you like these guys back on the roster? Tell me, should we have brought them both back? I was a Wilson fan three years ago. He, he He's playing every down. He's up in the line of scrimmage. He's making plays. The big fella as well. They've played. He, he's playing through the injuries, and and they made the defense solid up the middle. And they're and they're Dan Quinn guys. They work great in that defense. Yes, they brought back Goodwin as a special teamer. Another good pickup. They, you know, Tack McKinley. They brought back on a one year deal. Same with Fowler. They've definitely got rush men on the line of scrimmage. No. I, I think this is a defense made in Dan Quinn's image, if I can say that. Well, we're going to see what, how they tweak this defense to slow the run up a little bit. It, it's not the players getting blocked; it's the scheme. See, it's you don't need three hundred pound players to block, you know, to stuff the run. Your scheme stuffs the run. Right, right, right. It's, right. That's. I mean, I mean, you know, listen, I, I, I am not a defensive coordinator in the NFL, but it, let's see what the scheme does. And, and, and again, the, we need, we need somebody to stop the run a little more consistent. I know they're talking besides of running quarterbacks in the division, you know, that they play against running quarterbacks, the Chicago bears and the Eagles running. I mean, they're, they're running quarterbacks, right? The giants. Yeah. These guys have running, running quarterbacks. quarterbacks. So they're, you know, on, they're currently right. working on a Jonathan Hankins deal to get him back. I like him. You know, he definitely was a difference maker when he was in there. Yes. You know, people wanted Jonathan uh, Carlos Watkins. I would prefer Hankins. I think Hankins did a better job. Though it's no shade to Watkins. I mean, he's a decent player as well. And they want him back. Yeah, they're they're great. They're phenomenal role players. You know, these aren't guys who are going to go out and you know maybe uh, um, I don't know be all pro but they can be very effective at what they do so i'm fine with bringing these guys back listen let's move on to some of the new additions stefan gilmore brandon cooks who are you more happy to have now on the team uh, that extra that second wide receiver or the second cornerback well if i have to pick one, I like the defensive side of the ball, but yeah, it's hard to pick their equal. Right. I, I have to go to offensive side of the ball. Listen, it, it, again, it's a third down. There's not going to be any free throws, so I'm going to go to defensive side of the ball. There's not going to be a free throw down the field now. You know, you know, if Anthony Brown is is gone, your top four cornerbacks are you know Diggs. Gilmore, Deron Bland, and Jordan Lewis. When he's back, and you'll have yeah, you'll have Bland and Lewis in the slot, and they're that's really tough. If you're running four receivers, I think the Cowboys might have the advantage. Usually, I think the advantage goes to the offense when you've got four receivers versus the def defense because they don't have the depth. I think sitting right here right now, Cowboys have that depth of four receivers, and I think they might add. You know, they'll definitely add more depth behind him. I think Anthony Brown is done, but I think there's a Gilmore brings that real number two. You're not going to be able to pick on him. Not in this defense, not with his skill. Yeah, well, there's no number twos. This is two number ones now. And I think Diggs is going to have to step up his game too uh, a little bit as well. I think because mm -hmm. he, he was a little bit of a ballet dancer out there last year. But I And I think being with you know, former defensive player of the year, a guy who really is just absolute pros pro in Gilmore. Uh, I think that's only going to help him at his craft. I think we've seen Diggs improve, improve. Well, now he's going to take it to the next level. He really wants to be considered not just an interceptions guy, but a good coverage cornerback. This is the guy to learn from because he's not, he's not a, he's not a, a schlub, you know, he's not some schmuck they brought in. He's legit. And Brandon Cooks, I think, is very helpful for the offense because he, he begins to slide 
uh, the receivers where they're supposed to be. He takes the, the pressure off of CD and he puts Gallup back in that third receiver role, which I think will be just incredibly important uh, for the offense. I looked at his tape, uh, uh, and they're good. You're not going to put two guys on it. You're going to roll the zone against him. So, so somebody will be open for a big play. And he's a big play threat. I mean, since 2016, yes. he has 41 catches of 30 yards or more, which is second in the NFL only to Tyreek Hill. Last year, he had four himself, and the Cowboys had four as a team. I mean, he is, right. he is he has six thousand yard receiving years um in the last let me see here, in the last how long? I'm gonna check and see what my my notes here are. He he's a thousand yard machine, he's getting a thousand yards with Teddy Bridgewater. You know what I mean? Right. That's that's not um that's not no big deal. I mean he's out here No. He he there's one thing he does. Is catch the ball since 2015. He has 6,000 yard receiving seasons, more than Diggs, DeAndre, Stephon Diggs, DeAndre Allen, right. Devontae Adams, Keenan Allen, Tyler Lockett. I mean, he he performs. You know, he just goes out there. Yes, and he's, yeah, he's a professional receiver. No, that's a big player ability. That's, yeah, that's the difference. He's never, he just never he's never was on prime time. That's, right, he's not now, on a prime time. Too. That's the difference between sliding out like James Washington as their third receiver. No offense to Ty Hilton. He made a big play last year, but he's a definitive upgrade now over T.Y. Hilton. And, uh, you know, same thing with Gallup. Gallup will, Gallup will be more dangerous, A, in this new offense, and B, as a third receiver. Now you have to now you have to figure out who you're guarding. Like, you're, what third cornerback is going to be on Gallup? Uh, and plus, he's going to be a year healthier. He's ready to play. You know, I think an uh, underrated signing for the Cowboys here, um, Ronald Jones, they picked up a running back from the Buccaneers. I think they're gonna, the, the Cowboys seem to be understanding. It, it seems to, to me that this offseason, they've understood the value of certain positions. And getting Ronald Jones as another back in the backfield, he's got speed. He he can definitely break it. He's a diff, he, He's a a runner who can put his nose down and get short yards. He's got a good maneuverability. I do believe the offense is going back to zone blocking this year. So I think that fits him better. And, um, you know, they're going to run him back, I think, by committee with Pollard at the top of the committee, but they're going to throw as many bodies as they can. Well, I think they they got a, a clone. I think he's got the same style. And they like that style called turning around the corner and going and, and taking it to the house. Right. As he can take it to the house. No, they, yeah. I like him as an addition as an addition. They've got Adoga as a guard, some interior depth. They got Sieg as the long snapper. Now they've made moves. And you know, Cooper Rush, I forgot to say, is back, by the way, in a two year deal. Oh boy. I, you know, I was wow. I thought they're going to ask me to come back. I can't do it. I can't be the backup anymore. Last year was my last time I could take a shot at it. Listen, because I do have a little Steve Young in me. I saw this the other day. It said draft talent and buy need, and I think going into the draft, the Cowboys have bought their needs at a very respectable rate. I mean, they've been making some good decisions contract contractually. They don't see them having overpaid for anyone this offseason. Listen, CD is going to come up. Diggs is going to come up. Parsons is going to come up. But you, I would rather have the problem of having talented players that I've drafted after we signed than having the problem of I need to go into free agency and to sign top-of-the-line players. Like now they can sign them in-house. Not that I'm asking for a discount, but I am saying I'd rather draft the guys and pay them inside then have to go dip in the free agency pool and try and sign elite talent that way. I think they've done that and they're ready for the draft this year. Well, they went out, they, they did their homework. They put their game plan together. It's nice to put a game plan and succeed on it, but guess what? All on paper. Now it's all you can ask for. It's on paper. We got those, those names on paper are good players. They produce one of them won a championship. 
So, so does this get? I, I'm waiting for my Herb Adderley, Paul. I'm oh. waiting for my Herb Adderley somewhere. I, I gotta have. We gotta have a Herb Adderley just get us over the hump so we can get on that roll. They're we're a young foot. They're a young football team. Right. They're still not old because they draft well and they continue to draft uh, players who play. You know, they're able to they're able to stay young, and w- which generally speaking keeps them a, a, a healthier team. You look at some of these other teams; they get they get dinged up because you're an older team. I think the Eagles have to look out for that this year. Being an older team, all, especially on the offensive line, you know, Lane Johnson's back. He battled through injuries last year. Kelsey's back. You know, these guys. It, it's not easy to to go in and say, okay, uh, you know. We're just going to continue to play at a high level. Yeah, well, when you get older, your body breaks down. And the Cowboys usually have the healthier teams that can continue to stay out on the field. Well, when that O-line breaks down, your quarterback breaks down. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I think the Ravens have had to deal with that because they haven't had a healthy offensive line and Lamar's been dinged up. And now they've put themselves in an incredibly unique situation where you have this high-value quarterback who is – a running style quarterback and you're like, well, you're dinged up. Like, yeah, you're dinged up because our line hasn't been good and I've had to carry the load and now I want to get paid for it. Like, yeah, well, you're not going to get paid for it because you're dinged up. So your line really is everything. I know we can say that with, you know, Tyron Smith, but that's why they drafted Tyler Smith. It's important to keep these teams young. Yeah. So let's transition a little bit to the draft. We're going to do a lot more draft stuff as we, as we move along, pick 26 comes the Dallas Cowboys. Give me one player, realistically, you hope drops to the Cowboys, and one player you absolutely do not want the Cowboys picking at 26. I don't want the Michigan guy, Smith. I want the pick guy. You don't want Bozzy Smith? No. Yeah, he, yeah doesn't, no. he doesn't blow me away, you know. Yeah. Uh, you're looking for the pit D tackle. Yep. Mm-hmm. Pit D tackle. That's oh, what's his name? Chauncey. Oh, Elijah Chancy. Yancy. What's he called? Yancy. 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 Yeah. He's six foot two eighty. Six one two eighty. He's tremendously close to looking like Aaron Donald. You know. Does does he play like Aaron Donald? If I'm picking a, a D tackle in round one, he better play like you know the D tackles that have gone recently. You know, look at Jordan Davis, stuff like that. He barely saw the field last year. <laughs> you know, we have to make. I, if I'm picking a position like that, uh, I have to make sure that he's going to be just a really high end. Who's the cowboy? That they got from the Saints, it was awesome. Roy Glover. Yeah, that's what he's like. That's what he's like. You go look at his tape and see how quick he's off the snap. I'm sorry. <laughs> Why I want that guy off the snap. I, you know, you can be blocked. Don't get me wrong. I understand that, but I think in that division, in Division One level, he he produced off that defensive sp- stop. Hmm. You know, and remember, I, instead of instead of going after the, the the Rams tackle, they got Martin. Right. You know, they've had a couple of those recent drafts where, like, okay, you didn't pick one Hall of Famer, but you got another one. You remember Tyron Smith? They took JJ Watt mm-hmm. going after him. Hall of Famers either way. It's tough to say you wouldn't pick one or the other because without Zach Martin and Tyron Smith, you might have had Aaron Donald and JJ Watt. But would you have been able to keep your quarterback upright? I don't think so. Um, <laughs> And that's when they totally redid the line. They got Travis Frederick. They got everything. Mm-hmm. So for me, if I'm saying one person I want to stay away from is Dalton Kincaid, the tight end from Utah. Yeah. You know, 6'4". He's only 227, 230. That's light for a tight end. And he has back issues. Let me tell you, buddy, if you've got back issues in your young 20s, your early 20s, it doesn't magically get better. There's no uh, magic potion to drink. Like That's not something that's like, oh, that'll be fine. Yeah. It's like seven footers with foot issues. They don't just go away magically. Right. You deal with them your entire career. And uh, a reasonable person, I think, I hope falls to the Cowboys 
would be someone like Nolan Smith, the edge from Georgia, or I would even say uh, Brian Brees, the D tackle from Clemson. I think I'm not, I, I don't like him. You don't like Brees? I don't like Brees. Uh, I think I don't like him. I think what he played through last year, his sister died. Uh, she was sick. She passed away. He battled injury throughout the whole year. It's still decent player. He's been productive in college at a high level and against you know elite talent. Nolan Smith, though, you know, you say, okay, the Cowboys already have edge rushers. You got Sam Williams. You got Michael Parsons. I don't think you'll ever have too many elite edge rushers. You, you know, Demarcus Lawrence as well. You kick someone down inside. Keep Parsons as that you run almost like a five-two basically. Um, mm. But I don't know that I, I definitely I know that I don't want Dalton Kincaid because that's that's not working for me. All right, here's the million dollar question. Bijan Robinson standing there at 26. He hasn't been drafted. Do you take him? Do I take him or do they take him? Okay, let's answer both questions. Do you take him and then does the do the Cowboys take him? I probably will take him. I don't care about the you know first round stuff. He is that he is that good. Um Will they take him? I don't think I don't think they will take him. No. They've been through that. See, I you're 26. And we know just because you have a pick in the first round doesn't mean that's you how many first round grades I, you have. I, I got lunch. I'll bet you lunch right now. Right now, the Eagles take him. I'm Are you telling you. Take him at 10? Yep. Because he he he's rated top five. He's rated in the top ten. Yeah, I, think they, I think they should take him at 10. That doesn't strike me as a Howie Roseman thing to do, even though they have, even though because he is rated that good. Yeah. Okay, I'll tell you. I saw the I, I saw the rest of the running backs. They 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 I don't think he's OJ and the rest of them are are me. You know what I mean? I think they're I think there are a lot of good ones. Yeah, I think even his backup, Roscoe Johnson, can be really good in his own his own running game. I mean, they've got they've, there's a lot of talent. You know, Jameer Gibbs, um, from Alabama, you're telling if you told me Dallas oh. in round two, I, I would be jumping up and oh, down. I, oh, absolutely. You know, UCLA guy too is good. Texas AM guy, he's 185. He's like a little Tony Dorsett. Right, right. He's light, but he plays heavy. He plays big. Yeah. You know what I mean, you know, there's there's some guys. At, I do the Cowboys trade out of the first round and maybe grab someone like Drew Sanders. Man, he can get after the quarterback. Linebacker from Arkansas is nasty. Do you, do you, you know, uh, uh, fill maybe another wide receiver position with a Zay Flowers? I know they like Josh Downs from North Carolina. I probably wouldn't take them that high at 26. But, man, if I want to trade back in the first round, say to 31 with the Chiefs, the Chiefs want to come up and draft an edge rusher, right? Well, I'll move back and then take a wide receiver. You're gonna you're gonna throw a third to, to drop from first twenty six to thirty one. Okay, I could do that. And and there's there's guys like Darnell Washington. Do you take him the tight end? I I've heard a lot of generational tight end prospects that have never made it. O, o. J. Howard is like the first one who comes to mind. Kyle Pitts. These guys are they're freaks. They'd be whatever. Jerry would trade the the moon to get Kyle Pitts. Well. <laughs> Maybe he doesn't have to trade anything. Yeah, they're thinking about training him too. He's on the block. He hasn't done anything. The biggest waste of talent. I'll throw them a fifth or sixth round pick for him. Fine. You know, my thing, I think if they trade down, they could pick a tight end like Michael Mayer from Notre Dame. To me, he looks like the tight end that Mike McCarthy would pick. He could block well. He can he's a I mean, he broke all the tight end receiving records in Notre Dame. He's unreal. Would not be surprised if they pick him even over Washington, though I would probably prefer Washington because he's a phenomenal blocker. He's a freak. He's going. He, those two Those two guys are going. They're, they're going to the top 20. Ah, t- two tight ends in the top 20? Mm-hmm. There's, no, there's no way. Teams don't value they, they, like that. They, these guys are that good. That's why. It, it, you see, the, the rule varies from year to year. Let me tell you about drafting. It varies from year to year. So what rule applied last year – it's not the same issue. These guys are – those guys are great tight ends already. Now, we also know what a tight end – it could be a bust as well. Yes. What was the guy who got drafted with the Colts some years ago? He ended up with Detroit. 
and stunk. Well, um, what was his name? He was a tight end. Oh, well, he was well, drafted by Detroit. Yeah, Detroit drafted him. Yeah. Oh what was his name? And he said he was he the best tight end in the league. Yeah, yeah. He stunk for like four or five years, and then he went to – what did he go to to become pretty decent? Made a Pro Bowl or two. I can't think of his name now. We'll, we'll find out. Oh, my gosh. Now I have to look up. Yeah. Colts draft history. We're looking it up live here. To anyone listening. Or, or no, he, he got drafted by the Lions. Or Lions, Lions draft history. You're right. Enos, Enos, something like – Oh, I know. It's at the tip of my tongue. Enos? Uh, Ennis? Something like that? It's, um, it's, I'm almost there. Oh, man. Because we follow, I follow tight ends a lot when they get drafted. It's What's that, his name? It wasn't Hawkinson. It was... It's, it's been about seven <laughs> years now. Eric Ebron. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, Eric Ebron, right? Not the best he, tight he end. Stuck with them, and then I think he went to the Colts and played decent for a couple of years. He made one Pro Bowl with the Colts in 2018. Yeah, one Pro Bowl. Yeah, he made yeah. 13 touchdown catches that year. Yeah, that was. Yeah, he never broke. He never had more than five any other year in his career. Right. Yeah, it's it's strange. The tight ends are strange, and, and yep, unbelievable. Listen, I, I wouldn't mind a tight end, maybe a later round pick, like Sam Laporta from Iowa. He reminds me a lot of Kittle from the 49ers. He's got a lot of, I don't know, wiggles the right word. He's phenomenal getting the ball and making plays downfield. And his ability to, to be very athletic, I would not be upset if you're telling me the Cowboys go round three, 6'4", 250. You know, I think he's a, a, a very fluid a route runner, and he'd be uh, fantastic in that offense with the other guys that they have who can block and catch as well. So, you know, I don't think they need to spend high assets on the tight end position because you have some talented players. Um, but I think they have the ability to draft another player who needs to be there. How about Luke Schumacher, maker, okay. shoemaker? You know, Shoemaker, yeah, from tight end. Yeah, from Michigan. Michigan. Six, six, 250. I know yeah. a lot of guys who have him as like the third rated tight end in this draft. Yeah. Another yeah. guy you I think you could pick up later in the draft rather than spend, you know, a first or second rounder. You could spend a third or even a fourth rounder and pick him up and play. I would not be upset if round one they also picked Steve Avila, guard from TCU. Yeah, I, I saw the interview with him today. Um, a cowboy. So, his, his family's all cowboy fans. He's right. in TCU. He grew up there. Right. Yeah. So they won't use one of their, you know, you get 30 visits from outside players. They won't use one of the 30 visits on him because any local, do you have a local? Right. Player. So he'll be a local visit who will come in. So they'll definitely check him out. Um, Osiris Torrance is a guard from Florida who I think is also very difficult. Uh, he, he's very tough. He's difficult to move out of the hole. He's 6'5", 335. You know, he's a massive human being. And Florida just produces good interior linemen. You know what I mean? Right. I, I trust them. The Ohio State centers, uh, interior alignment from Florida, you know, mm -hmm. things like that. They're like, okay, they look pretty good. So I, I, we're winding down here last few minutes. And, um, you know, it, it's – we're getting to the time when we're ready to be – just draft all the time and then camps around the corner – um, I want to talk about one other thing. I like to do a random cowboy. And today, Marion Barber was my random cowboy. Rest in peace. He passed away yeah. when I was last year. He was he was a, a phenomenal player, tough as nails. He was an awesome heart and soul of the Cowboys for a while. You know, six seasons in Dallas, man. Never rushed for a thousand yards, but those couple years were like fourteen touchdowns, ten touchdowns, and he was. Yeah. Ox, an absolute ox. Yeah, I think it was. If they had the best two yard run in an NFL history on the ball. Yeah, right? They all loved them. They all loved them. They all loved them. Yep. And they said he, he, uh, they said he took care of a lot of other players after his life, you know, after his playing career. You know, poor guy died of you know, heat stroke. It, it was awful, just awful, just a good, a yeah. good man. It's, it's sad to see. I just wanted to remember him because 
no one ever spoke ill of him. Right. One of those players who won't be in the Hall of Fame, right? He's not going to be in right. the Ring of Honor. But just – you want to talk about pure football, that's the oh, guy. Oh, absolutely, yes. So – that's our random Cowboys player of the day. Anything else you want to go over the last two minutes we got here before you head out? Well, I want to talk about um, the different philosophy that they're going to they're going to run the football to set up the pass. Let Schottenheimer call the plays. Let him run, call the plays, and then they're going to manhandle. Their philosophy is, is different now. He understands what it takes to win a championship is to rest your defense. That's what he's telling you. We are going to get to that. Rest your, good, rest your good defense. Yes. Not, bring, not an average defense. Bring it back to that on the next yeah. episode of Cowboys and Coffee. All right? Listen, yeah. I'm glad that we're back. Season three, we're kicking off. Um, and before we go, the Huskies are in the final four. They're going to win it all, baby. They're going to win it all. And That's something. What a shot. Yeah. Anyway, listen. Go Cowboys. Um, thanks again for watching. We're on, you can watch us on YouTube. You can listen to us on Spotify, Anchor FM, Apple iTunes, whatever you've got. We are there. D, I love you. And uh, love you. talk to you soon. All right. Bye, buddy. All right. Thank you, everybody. See you later.